Two of the most important skills in the modern world, both at school and in your work, are to learn new skills fast and have the ability to focus, with the former being important because we live in an incredibly fast moving world, and the latter being a skill that isn't easily found in a fast paced and highly distracting environment. Not only will these skills improve the quality of your work, but will directly influence and improve your productivity. In this video, I want to share how I developed skills to learn fast and focus intensely, but equally some of the science behind these critical skills and how you can develop them yourself. Cal Newport's Deep Work is a fantastic book that inspired this share, and I really can't recommend it enough, so please consider checking it out. So for me, deep work or periods of focus on a specific task is something that comes naturally to me. That's not because I always understood or knew about the benefits and value of deep work, but rather it came as a natural inclination to seek out this kind of work, almost certainly because I'm quite introverted by nature. For example, when young, one of my favourite pastimes was to draw, so I'd spend long periods of time just sketching. Today, much of the tasks or hobbies of most interest to me are those which I do alone, and usually have some meaning to me personally. However, where this really comes to be valuable is how it can influence my work, as I find I actually produce better quality work when left to my own devices, without distraction. And in a world where distraction is often overwhelming and seemingly inescapable, this skill is invaluable. Thing is, it wasn't always this way, as when I first started my professional career, I actually felt obligated to compromise and tackle shallow work as part of my day. This would be responding to emails quickly, usually immediately, or feeling like I had to attend certain meetings which served no purpose, or even just have conversations with people that ultimately led to nothing. In truth, these aren't always bad things to do when starting out in a new office environment, as you need to build relationships, but fundamentally it was affecting my work and I find myself making careless mistakes as a result. So. I actively sought out methods to allow me to focus and improve the quality of my work, and the first step to that was to set up my environment to reduce distractions. The first thing I did was get some earphones and listen to music while working, drowning out other background noise. I'd like to say that silence would be preferable, but in an open office environment that was simply impossible. Sometimes, if I needed to focus I'd even book out a meeting room just so that I could work alone in a quiet space for a morning or afternoon, sometimes even the whole day. Now that my physical environment was less of a problem, I shifted to changing my digital environment. First, I'd only open emails at set times in the day, usually in the morning, at lunch and at the end of the day. Other than those times, my emails were closed the rest of the time. From here, I limited the access people had to me via chat as well, as I'd either set myself to have a status of busy, away and often even just offline. The lack of approachability might seem negative in the first instance, but what I found was that most people understood my reasons for it, and respected my space when they knew I wanted to focus. In the vast majority of cases, they wouldn't disturb me while I was focused on my work, and would either email me or wait to speak to me when I didn't have my earphones in. On that note, sometimes I'd just wear earphones without listening to anything just so I could focus. The amazing thing is, we often feel an obligation to respond immediately to any communication today, but the reality for most jobs is that leaving it for a few hours will not have any detrimental effects. As someone working in software development, distractions while trying to code was nothing short of a nightmare for me, so these changes in my working habits made a massive difference. Here's the thing. The ability to focus allowed me to improve the quality of my work, which was more appreciated by those it impacted and meant I spent less time dealing with problems later down the line. Not only this, but the process meant I became a more trusted consultant and developer and it opened up opportunities to tackle more complex customers and solutions, leading to greater exposure in my job and opening up paths that were previously not there for me. It's really quite simple. If I didn't focus on deep work and allowed shallow work to distract me, I wouldn't have been able to show what I'm capable of and produce high quality and impactful work. It wouldn't have allowed me to get the opportunities to take on more responsibility, and I wouldn't have reached any senior positions in my career. And it's something I continue to this day, even more so now as we live in a world where home working is more accepted and commonly practiced than ever before. For deep work, it's something I value more than ever. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know with a like and consider subscribing with the bell on for more content in the future. So why is focus valuable and how does all of this relate to learning faster? Well, to understand this we need to understand a little about the neuroscience. 
The reason that focused work helps learn skills more quickly is because of something called myelin, which is an insulating layer that forms around the nerves. Myelin allows electrical impulses to transmit quickly and efficiently along nerve cells and if myelin is damaged, these impulses slow down. When you do deep work and focus on a particular skill, you develop more myelin around the relevant neurons, allowing the corresponding circuit to fire more efficiently. As the saying goes, practice makes perfect and now you know why. To explain it further, when you focus intensely on a specific skill, you're forcing the specific relevant circuit to fire over and over in isolation. This repetition triggers cells called oligodendrocytes to begin wrapping layers of myelin around the neurons in the circuits. The reason I improved my skills as a developer and consultant was when I isolated myself to focus on my work, I triggered the process of myelination to cement my ability to perform duties with greater efficacy and efficiency, and by reducing my distractions, I minimised the risk of attention residue. When you move from one unfinished task to another and are distracted from a task, the thoughts from that task or distraction can persist and intrude while performing the next task. This is called attention residue. As you can probably guess, when this occurs it can be difficult to complete a task with precision and efficiency, which can impact the quality of your work. Ideally to avoid attention residue, you want to try and fully complete a task before moving on to the next, and of course you want to remove distractions in your work environment. I've already talked about how I remove distractions, but it's not always so easy to fully complete one task especially when it's a project that might take days to complete. In this scenario, to help me minimise the effects of attention residue, I break down the task into smaller subtasks, which is what I'll look to get completed in my periods of deep work, and in those times where I check my emails, I try to ensure I've responded to those items I need to, to the best of my ability and satisfaction to ensure that it doesn't impact my next period of focused effort. So now that we understand why focus effort is so important in getting high quality output and learning skills through a process of myelination, how do we apply this in our lives? Well, what I found that has worked for me is to break down tasks and identify whether they are deep work or shallow work. Any task that requires deep work, I'll schedule prolonged periods of time to complete them. During these periods I remove all distractions that I can. I try to work in silence or at least listen to music to minimise background noise. I switch off emails and make myself unavailable on chat. I also usually switch off all notifications on my phone, often not keeping my phone near me when working. And to minimise the risk of attention residue, I set myself realistic and achievable targets to complete in my schedule. All in all, this approach has had huge benefits for me and I appreciate and value those periods when I can focus on my work it's played a significant role in the growth of my career and importantly, it's seen my productive output increase significantly, as productivity can be measured by time multiplied by intensity which equals work accomplished.